So I remember this one day back in 11th grade during football practice, I got in trouble because I was slacking. And you know what happens in football? If one person gets punished, we all get punished. Our coach, this tall old white country dude, looked like he had about two on the way. Water looked like it would have broken any meaning. We're not gonna use his real name, we're gonna call him Coach Adderson. He had us do this punishment drill where we had to put a 45 pound weight on the ground and push it across the turf from one side of the gym to the other in a specific form just to make it hurt. And he was like, the more you stop and take a break, the longer you'll do it. Do y'all know how hard it was to do this drill if you weren't strong enough? Like, you had to put a 45 pound weight across the turf that was parched. That means that traction on the ground about to be vicious. Luckily for me though, I was strong enough to push it with ease. So that little drill ain't put no fear in me. I'm from that splat. I was headed up to commies every day, putting in that diesel. Only one problem though, I ain't want to, even though I had to. Man's really caught me on menace timing. You would've thought I had the black song. Whole time, I was already in a bad mood, looking for trouble because I had to show up every day, suffering, going to a place where the coach gave me the Oscar the Grouch treatment because of my past mistakes, even though I was one of the strongest and most improved people at the time because I took the initiative to stop overthinking and improve my game. Bruh, I got so better over the years to the point where almost every time I touched the field i make either a touchdown or a lot of yards but this nigga still didn't give me as much play time as the two meat riders in front of me that were running backs too they must have really wanted a gumball benson i used to hear people in the stands all the time get mad at him for taking me out after i made a touchdown or a lot of yards but this nigga did not care because in his peanut brain because of my past mistakes he intentionally held my playback time back even when i did good just to not risk it and held high expectations for me every time I did good consecutively. But the second I mess up, you're trash, you're dog water, you're actually bad, you're boo boo, retire, buy a dog, die alone, absolutely butt cheeks. But if the meat writers mess up, then oh, it's okay. You work real hard today, boys. Why don't you go ahead and get yourself a gumball? Oh, oh matter of fact, grab two. <laughs> Be gentle. I got so sick of trying to get his validation, bruh. Eventually, lost passion for the game, hit my breaking point, and decided to quit. Had me feeling like Gohan in the Cell games, talking about some you feel me? <laughs> I wanted to wait to quit though so I could keep them benefits of being in a sport as long as possible until it was time for me to fly off with Shinron. That day, I was the definition of a middle finger to everybody in that room because they were a part of the problem too. All morals and selflessness were out the window, bruh. I was in a dark place like Anakin when Obi-Wan dropped that nigga and left him by the lava. I'ma keep it a thou wow with y'all. I did not care if they were suffering down there pushing on plates. I was just ready to bounce to the crib and bust down on some chicken noodle soup. So I did what any person on Black Air Force energy menace to society timing would probably do. B.S. While everybody else was exerting their energy trying to be Lightning McQueen, I was over there chilling on purpose, moving my plate like the snail from Monsters University. I knew Buddy was gonna get mad, that's why I did it. And I did it until he started noticing. And when he did, Buddy started tweaking. Bruh, he was more frustrated than an ostrich doing 60 on a highway. This is exactly what happened after. Okay, everybody stop and go back to work. Devonte, get over here. What are you doing? Your wife the drill no you're not you're doing it wrong the correct form is like this do it right or i'm benching you the next game and pick up the pace okay you know somebody numb when they show absolutely no expression whatsoever when they respond to you so then i bs again next thing i know five seconds later coach pushes me to the ground with his full grown man force and did the drill. Mans didn't lower his power level at all. My very first reaction was, I gotta bury this nigga. I have no choice at this point. I had anger issues back then, so the only thing on my mind was murder, I mean self-defense. I felt embarrassed, confused, angry, and shocked all in two seconds because I didn't expect this man to do something like that. Like, dang, calm down, Phil. Why not just send me home? It took every bone in my body to keep me from running the fade on this nigga, man. So you know what I did? I beat him up, stomped him out, slapped him with a 10 pound weight, poured milk on his head, stomped him out again, took a dump on the nigga. <laughs> I, I ain't do none of that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing. Eventually, I realized the consequences that would come after the fade if I saw it through. And instead, I thought to myself, you know what? Forget waiting. 
I'm done. Slid to the locker room, got my stuff, and bounced to the crib. So the next day, I parted ways with the football team. And even though he and a lot of my teammates did me wrong, I shouldn't have tried to get revenge on them after making me suffer, cause that only led to more chaos. And I shouldn't have quit when things got hard or unfair. That's not how winning's done. Best believe my parents were pissed that I quit, but I don't regret it. Cause honestly, I, I ain't really wanna play football anymore anyway. You know, I just lost the passion. However, God closed one door just to open up another which gave me a lot more free time to chase my true love. Content creation. You don't even know how I've been through. The strain is hyperbolic. 